When I first started reading comic books, I couldn't read. I was looked at the panels and made stories up. I was about four years old, and one of the first characters that I came in contact with was this character that could turn himself into fire. Not this guy, but this guy here. It was Toro, the Human Torch's partner. And somehow I confused this character with the character that is the feature of our story for today. And that character is the Submariner. Back in the 1940s, Timely Comics had the rights to and had created with Bill Everett the superhero or anti-hero known as the Submariner and the Human Torch, Captain America and the Submariner were the top three selling comic books of their time for Timely Comics. I'll just go through a few of the panels here. Submariner's bathing suit was so similar to the bathing suit that was worn by Toro in the Human Torch storylines that when Human Torch would go into the water I'd think that he became the Submariner. Now, you can see how the Submariner and the Human Torch, or the Human Torch's partner, and go through some of these panels of the Human Torch and Toro, see, without the without his flame to a four-year-old that looks like the Submariner above water right today's story is going to be from the comic book Fantastic Four number four, which features the coming of the Submariner. This is how they brought him back into the 1960s after the demise of interest in comic books from the 1940s. Sort of been revived in the 1950s, around 1952 to 1957, but Submariner, Human Torch, and Captain America hadn't been seen for Oh, 12 years maybe, 1957 was the last time you would see them. And this is the soundtrack from the 1960s radio show of the Fantastic Four and this comic book issue number four. Attention, all true believers. Is on the air. Out of the pages of the world's greatest comic magazine come the adventures of the Fantastic Four. This week's story revolves around a menace from the sea, and we'll begin our shanty in just half a moment. Our story this week picks up where we left off last week. The Fantastic Four have returned to their headquarters in the Baxter Building after Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, had defeated the Miracle Man. I'm sure it'll all come back to you as we proceed. Somewhere out there among the teeming millions of New York City, Torch is hiding from us. We've got to find him. But he can stay hidden for all I care. He's nothing but a spoiled teenage brat anyway. How can you talk about my brother that way? He saved us from the Miracle Man, and he may be out there hurt or in trouble. Oh, I'm sure Johnny's all right, Sue. 
As for you, Ben, it's all your fault that he ran off in the first place. Oh, sure, sure. Everything around here is my fault. It is your fault, Ben. Johnny went after the Miracle Man single-handedly. And single-handedly, he defeated him. And thanks to the torch, the atomic cannon was returned safely to the Army. Everyone was happy about it. Everyone except you. You were jealous of Johnny's achievement, so you picked an argument with him. Your bickering made him leave us. I'm through with you, you big bully. And I'm through with the Fantastic Four. Understand? Through. Well, we're going to find that youngster. And that means you too, Ben. And when I find him, I'll teach him to run out on us like that. Oh, Reed, darling. If he harms my little brother. And so the Fantastic Four, minus one, set out in their Fantastic Car to search the Megalopolis. You check the village where you and Johnny grew up. Okay, Reed. Ben, you cruise the west side and check garages. Now, what are you going to be doing, Reed, darling? Oh, Ben, give me a break. Okay, this is where we separate. Release sections. Thus, the long search begins. Susan Storm lands in the center of town. Johnny loves this neighborhood. There are so many people his age. Here's a good place to start searching on a hot day. The soda fountain where Johnny hangs out. And there's one of his pals. Uh, excuse me. Uh, have you seen my brother, Johnny Storm? Uh, what? I must be hallucinating. Some funny sounding chick's voice out of thin air. Wait a minute. If you're hallucinating, then I'm hallucinating. I'm getting out of here. I never understood why he hangs out here. These kids sure scare easy. Oh well, back to the search. <laughs> back to the search indeed. We find Mr. Fantastic in Central Park near the bike trails. But tell me quick, have you seen Johnny Storm the Torch? No, man, I haven't. He's, 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 no time to chat right now. Sooner or later, I'll find someone who's seen him. But little does Mr. Fantastic know that less than a mile away in Swanson's garage... Nobody can modify an engine like you, man. Yeah, that's incredible. You're only saying that because it's true. You know, the whole country is looking for the human torch. Yeah. And he's right here working with us on cars. <laughs> well, I've got to do a little welding, guys, so step back for a few seconds. Flame on. Hey, John. I didn't know you could ignite parts of your body. The flame from my finger beats a welding torch any day. It's really nifty. Every time I use my flame, I learn new things I can do with it. By concentrating, I can keep it away from that gasoline. But if I wanted to, I could merge my flame with that barrel of oil and keep this place heated for months at almost no cost. Reed and I have done a series of tests. But as Johnny explains his superhuman abilities, one of his ex-teammates is right outside, preparing to demonstrate his. Before I put myself out searching this whole city for next spring, I'll play a bunch. The thing, Frank Master. And now I'm going to show you what we do to design it. You can't beat the torch thing. He's too hot for you. The flame doesn't scare me. There's gasoline all over here. One spark in your battles will be statistics. I'm getting out of here before I'm blown up. Flame off, torch. Flame off or I'll drop this jalopy right on you and we'll all be blown to bits. Drop the car thing. Sure, I'll drop the car. <laughs> now I'll take care of you. You've always laughed at me because I'm ugly. So why aren't you laughing now, punk? Lay off, thing. I'm warning you. Don't worry, sonny boy. I won't spoil your pretty face. I'm just going to rough you up a little so you won't forget who's boss around here. Knock it off, thing. I'm not going to warn you again. Warn me? I'm telling you, I'm going to... Place of seclusion in the Bowery. No one will 
Johnny wanted the anonymity of the Bowery, and for his two bits, he shared a room with 15 other men, all similarly inclined. Well, it ain't the Waldorf, but I'll be safe here while I plan my next move. Hey, pal, could I see that comic book over there? Sure, Mac. Here you go. Submariner. I remember someone talking about him. He was the world's most unusual character. He lived underwater and was as strong as ten men. I wonder what happened to him. He was supposed to be immortal. You know about Submariner? What? Oh, yeah. You got a bum over here who's as strong as that guy's supposed to be. Yeah? Hey, over there. Wake up. Oh, 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 oh. Never mind. We got a lieutenant here. Show what you can do. Oh, well, I want to sleep. Well, I'll leave the old man alone. He's probably tired. Well, he's never too tired for this. Come on, you mangy bum. Get his phone book in here. No, no, where are your puny friend? Let's teach him a lesson, boys. Get him. I've been spoiling for a good fight. I said... Go away. All of you. I'm tired of showing my strength. I just want to remember who I am. What I am. I've spent so many years here in this fog. My mind's a blank. This guard is down. Now's our chance. Yeah, I never like to creep anyway. Hold it. Leave him alone. Can't you see he's sick? He's got amnesia, loss of memory. He doesn't even know who he is. Yeah, but we'll be fine. Wait a second, I've got an easier way. First, let's show him what he really looks like. Let's give him a hot shave. Play him on. Hey, what's that? You got to be a human torch. I can control my torch flames within a hair's width. Look at his face. It can't be. It is. It's submariner. At the same moment that Johnny Storm makes his incredible discovery, the other members of the Fantastic Four are continuing their search for him. Have you fellas seen a flaming teenager flying around the city? Holy smokes, I'm glad about you guys, but I have a friend that will really exist. They exist, all right. Now, how about it? Have you seen the torch? Ah, uh, no. Well, if you do, contact the Fantastic Four. Susan Storm, too, prowls the vast metropolis as the Invisible Girl. I've traveled all the way down to the Bowery, a wreckage of all souls. I can't believe I found Johnny here. Come on, gal. If you are Submariner, I know one thing that will bring back your memory for sure. If you can, be forever in your debt. I'm wasting precious time. I'll continue down the road for Johnny and Tiny and once more, destiny dabbles with a fate of yours. Susan Storm, less than ten feet from her brother, turns and walks away, not seeing the subject of her search. Okay, the coast is clear. Flame on! Ah, you're a demon! It's okay, you're safe from my flame. We're just going for a little flight test. See? There's the Atlantic Ocean. But, what do you see, pal? I won't drop you. Yeah. If he is something, the secret will bring back his book. If not, I'll die for him safe. submerged in the mighty Atlantic, a startling change comes over the derelict. In one sweeping motion, he removes his outer garments and stands revealed as the legendary ruler of the sea, the invincible Prince Namor, the Submariner. I remember who I am now. I must return to my family, my friends, to my undersea kingdom. Once again traveling in his native element like a rocketing torpedo, Prince Namor soon reaches his almost forgotten land, only to find that it's ruined. It's all been destroyed. Oh, what's that glow in the water there? It must be radioactivity. Oh, no, I know what happened to my world. The selfish humans poisoned our water with their atomic tests. My people, though not harmed by the radiation, must they move to elsewhere. Dispersed when this part of the undersea environment was no longer inhabitable. The oceans are vast, nearly endless. How can I ever find them? Where shall I begin to look? And moments later, Johnny is standing at the pier. You're back. You are Submariner. I'm so glad you're safe. You're not to be proud of what you've done. 
By returning my memory, you have signed a death warrant for the whole human race. What, what are you talking about? I'm talking about a revenge. The revenge I shall have for the destruction of my undersea kingdom. I am a Prince Namor, the Submariner. And now you shall fear my strength as it is turned against you. And so speaking, Submariner submerges, leaving Johnny Storm alone. I better warn the others. My grudge with Ben is insignificant compared to the threat from Submariner. Seconds later, the other three members of the super team see the Fantastic Four emergency flare in the sky. Look, it must be a signal from Johnny. It's coming from the piers by the river. I can't that rat stay out of trouble. Faster, Reed, faster. He must be in danger. Easy, Sue. We're almost there. There he is. I got eyes. I can see him. What's the idea of shooting off that flare? You're only supposed to use it in emergencies. This is an emergency, you big ape. What'd you call me? Wyatt, Ben. What is it, Johnny? Well, we're going to need each other now. Submariner is back, and I just wanted to say... Submariner? I thought he died long ago. Well, he's alive, all right. And from what I've seen, he's more dangerous than ever. Bah, who's worried? Nothing human can stand up to the thing. That's just it, big boy. He ain't human. Prince Namor of the sea isn't quite human. His race was old when our son was young, and he knows well the secrets of the deep. I shall unleash a monster upon mankind, the likes of which they have never even dreamed. Ah, he is slumbering still, as he has done for ages. The largest living creature in all the world, the deadly Giganto. His rumble can only be interrupted by his trumpet shell, which my ancestors buried here centuries ago. Come, Giganto. It is time. Ah, it's working. I have awakened the monster. No, nothing can stop him. He will follow the trumpet shell wherever it leads. Of the vengeful submariner, the trumpet shell leads Giganto to the surface world. Look, Captain, on the port bow. Why are you mad at that? Oh, Martin, you. It is good. He's right for us. 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 He's right for us.